Samit Patel nudges knots past the 300 mark. Nottinghamshire sit at the top of Division 1 after their Round 3 win, Hampshire enduring a frustrating match in the third round due to rain. They were looking to hit the ground running as they travelled to Trent Bridge. Knotts won the toss and elected to bat, but it didn't look the most prudent of decisions when Steve Mullaney was caught by wheel off Abbott in just the fourth over, the Nottinghamshire skipper out for 11. More wickets followed. Chris Nash brilliantly caught at fourth slip off the bowling of Fidel Edwards. And that was before Jake Libby was trapped in the same over LBW for a 19-ball duck. After suffering these early losses, Patel and Taylor started to rebuild for the hosts. The pair combined well and a solid-looking partnership started to flourish. They'd nearly put on a century for the fourth wicket before Hampshire finally found the breakthrough. The partnership worth 95 when Taylor was run out by Amla just three runs shy of his 50. Vessels joined Patel at the crease and they saw proceedings through to lunch, Patel bringing up his half-century in the process. So, at the break, the score 137 for four. A seesaw morning to look back on Abbott and Edwards striking early to reduce the hosts to 27 for three, but some outstanding batting from Taylor and Patel helping the home side to a more respectable total going into the afternoon. Vessels and Patel came out firing in that afternoon session, the pair managing to top up the run rate emphatically. Edwards then found the breakthrough as he removed Samit Patel and Patel's innings brought to an end on 73. Moores was the new man in and he pushed on nicely to find a few quick boundaries. But he soon met his fate when Chris Wood picked up his first wicket of the day, the batsman edging to wheel at gully out for 29. Broad and Vessels managed to put on a decent looking partnership, both players finding the boundary. But Wheel managed to break the partnership when he had Broad caught at mid-on by Vince. The England bowler out for 33. Despite the fall of wickets, Ricky Vessels did manage to bring up his first half century of the season. But Fletcher, the man to join him at the crease, fell shortly afterwards. Fidel Edwards, the man with the delivery. McManus with the catch. In the very next over, Vessels was out, caught by Dawson off the bowling of Wheel. And although the ninth wicket stand did last some time, Ball and Gurney managing to find a few lusty blows to the boundary, the innings was brought to a close by Dawson, Knotts finishing on 302 all out. That brought the teams off for tea. Patel, the pick of the batsman, his impressive 73 standing head and shoulders above the other efforts, although Vessels worth an honourable mention with 54. As far as the bowling was concerned, Fidel Edwards, the impressive character there, his figures 4 for 84. It was a terrible start for Hampshire in the evening. They didn't manage to have a run on the board before Stuart Broad found the breakthrough. Jimmy Adams nicking off to Moores behind for a duck. Despite Weatherly's attempts to increase the run rate, Broad soon struck again. The batsman edging behind, Taylor with the catch this time, as Weatherly was on his way for 12. Hashim Amla was the new man to come out to the crease, alongside James Vince. They managed to put on a few runs before Vince became the third wicket down. This time, LBW Fletcher for five. That brought Russo to join Amla, and the pair managed to see Hampshire through until the close. They ended the day 70 for three, with Amla not out on 27, Russo with an entertaining 24. So, going in to day two in Nottingham, it is Notts who hold the edge at present, Hampshire trailing by 232 runs, with seven first innings wickets remaining. Broad, Fletcher and Patel excel as Notts take control against Hampshire. Stuart Broad took two wickets after tea yesterday, leaving Hampshire 70 for three in their reply to Nottinghamshire. The visitors trailed by 232 going into day two, with Amla and Rousseau returning to the crease in the morning. It was a slow start for both Rousseau and Amla, and the first wicket came thanks to Broad. Rousseau caught it slip for 26. But Amla showed no signs of letting up and he pushed on to a 93 ball half century. The next wicket to fall was Liam Dawson, Harry Gurney claiming his 250th first class wicket thanks to a Libby catch. The batsman out for 10. Amla collected a few more before he was caught by Vessels, out for 69 courtesy of a Patel delivery. 
Abbott McManus took play through till lunch without further loss, the score 154 for six. It was an excellent session to look back on for Notts, who took three valuable wickets. An admirable 69 from Amla, giving Hampshire something to cheer about, but there was still a challenging task in front of the visitors, trailing by 148. They looked to start the afternoon session well, but it was Patel who eventually broke the partnership. He removed Abbott for 14. A new man Wood was next to go, collecting just five runs before he was bowled by Patel. 13 runs were added before the next wicket went down. Wheel out courtesy of Jake Ball, caught by Mullaney. And despite a late effort from McManus, the final wicket soon came. The batsman falling victim to Fletcher. Hampshire all out for 223, which took the teams to tee. So Notts took a first innings lead of 79 over Hampshire and they would have been happy with their effort. Efficient work from the bowlers preventing any mammoth batting scores. Patel and Broad both picking up three wickets each. The home side began their second innings through Mullaney and Libby. The pair starting well, contributing with a flurry of boundaries. Mullaney made short time in reaching his 50. He hit a six off Dawson to bring up his landmark off just 69 deliveries. The pair took knots easily past the 100 mark and they soon reached stumps, the score 136 without loss. So it was the perfect day for Nottinghamshire. They lead by a whopping 215 runs at the close with all 10 wickets intact. Mullaney unbeaten on 82, with Libby also at the crease on 50 not out. Hampshire will need some seriously early wickets on day three if they're to have any chance of getting anything from this match. Nottinghamshire in control, heading into final day. Nottinghamshire dominated Hampshire on day two of their encounter. The home side led by 215 runs going into day three, with 10 wickets still intact. Mullaney and Libby returned to the crease in the morning, but it was a slow start for the batsman. Libby soon sent packing when he was caught by Adams off Fidel Edwards. Nash was next in and supported Mullaney to his century. Dominant stuff from the captain, earning him his 13th first-class ton in his career. His teammate Nash, however, would soon depart, caught behind off-wheel. Taylor arrived at the crease and built up a partnership with Mullaney, both managing to find the rope with ease. But Mullaney was the next to go, Vince with the catch, Weatherly the bowler, but Mullaney out for a sensational 130. The pair of Taylor and Patel managed to see the teams through to lunch. The score 280 for three. Knott's lead at this stage, 359 runs with seven wickets still in the bank. A very strong position for the hosts. Mullaney the star man in bat with that 130. In the afternoon, Ross Taylor pushed on with aggression, bringing up his 50 off just 46 balls. That milestone including two sixes. And he didn't stop there. The batsman continuing to smash the ball around. His partner Patel couldn't offer much more though, he was caught by wheel off Dawson for 36. And then Taylor met his fate just two overs later, his rapid innings coming to a close, bowled by wheel for 83. New man Moores was next in and he came out firing, some huge hitting resulting in three sixes in quick succession. But his aggression did cost him, he was caught by Vince off the bowling of Edwards, out for 34, they came off just 22 balls. Newman Broad was only able to add one before he was sent packing Wood with the wicket and Wood picked up another just four balls later. Vessels out for 14, Weatherly with the catch. Fletcher added a few more upon his arrival at the crease but became the ninth wicket to fall when he was bowled by Edwards for nine and with the score at 389 for nine, Mullaney made the decision to declare, putting Hampshire back into bat. An admirable display of batting from the home side Double figures dominating the batting card and some big scores as well, including that 130 from the skipper. So, a target of 469 runs to win for Hampshire, a mammoth target for the visitors when Weatherly and Adams took to the crease. The pair made a steady start to the innings and they added 16 runs over the 12 overs up until T. As the batsmen came out after the break, they looked to continue their solid form and found a number of boundaries. Weatherly reached his half century, hitting a four off the bowling of Gurney to bring up the milestone. 82 runs were added in total before the first wicket fell. Patel the man to make the breakthrough, Fletcher with the catch as Weatherly was out on 56. In the very next over, Adams fell victim to Gurney, Mullaney with the catch this time as Adams was back in the pavilion.
Nottinghamshire up the pressure and they were rewarded when Vince was trapped LBW by Broad a few overs later for just five, leaving the visitors struggling at 93 for three. However, Amler and Wood led a counter charge in the final overs of the day, hitting several boundaries, particularly off Broad, to see Hampshire close on 111. It will still require a diligent effort on the final day for Hampshire to avoid defeat. They trail by 358 runs with just seven wickets remaining. Knots will look for early wickets as they go in search of their third win of the season. Knots prevail in spite of Amla century. After a declaration and three early wickets yesterday, Nottinghamshire would have fancied themselves going into day four. Hampshire required 358 runs for the win. Knots needed seven wickets. Four balls was all it took for Jake Ball to find his form in the morning. He removed Wood clean bowled for 13. Amler then offered some resistance and he managed to add a few runs. But his partner Russo was only able to put on seven before he was sent packing. The ball edged off a broad delivery. Dawson was the new man in and he added six before a blow from Gurney resulted in a hand injury. The batsman had to retire hurt, which resulted in McManus being brought in to bat. Amla and McManus batted sensibly, Hashim Amla even reaching his half century just before the break. So Knotts were still closing in on victory at this stage. They needed just five more wickets with Broad and Ball looking very dangerous. Hampshire needed 295 runs to win, an unlikely task for the visitors when McManus and Amla returned in the afternoon. When the pair returned, they lasted some time, but they only added 17 runs before Broad managed the breakthrough. Amla continued to push on nicely, with new man Abbott also contributing runs. Abbott, though, fell for 10 when he was caught by vessels off the bowling of ball, just three wickets remaining at this stage. Five more runs went on to the total before the eighth wicket fell. Dawson trapped LBW by Gurney. That wicket taken on the last ball before T, the score then at the interval 241 for eight. Despite a decent bowling display, Amler was still at the crease and if Hampshire were to get anything from the match, he was the key man. The South African didn't take long to reach his century, the landmark including 13 boundaries, but just a few overs later, Wheel was dismissed for two. Taylor with the catch, Gurney the bowler. With 34 overs still remaining in the day, the task was to be too much for Amler and Edwards. Amler the man to go when he was caught by Taylor off the bowling of ball. Knotts winning the match then by 203 runs. Nottinghamshire claiming their third win of the season, Despite that classy batting display from Hashim Amla, wickets from Broad, Ball and Gurney helping the home side to a convincing victory. 22 points collected by Knotts who increase their lead at the top of Division 1. Hampshire take just four.